Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, December 21st, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a consolidation, more appropriate to say a, a bipolar consolidation as the market has been uh, since the Fed announcement last Wednesday has been uh, going up, then down, 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 now back up today. Uh, so it was like one day of good, three days completely undoing uh, the uh, optimism that uh, came in from the strong rally after the Fed and now uh, today reclaiming a lot of the lost ground. Uh, actually back above the level that we were at right prior to uh, to the Fed announcement, and uh, that's certainly a good sign. But uh, we've also got uh, some better action in leading stocks, so that's a good sign too. We also saw the G5 outperform, another good sign. And one thing about the G5 that we, uh, when Alex and Hunter and I were talking, is that it showed relative strength versus the big cap averages. Uh, from right after the Fed announcement. It never really broke back below that level. We'll take a look at that on the indexes uh, when I go through the charts, but that was something that kept us from uh, getting more defensive than we were. Uh, even though we pulled back and tested some key areas, we reclaimed them today, and um, we'll see what the rest of the week brings. It is se the seasonal time for a Santa Claus rally. So let's check the trend gauge over here. Uh, market leaders are on neutral, improving after today. Um, the little arrow turning green. Short term, bearish, but uh, again, uh, reclaiming some of the uh, major five indexes, reclaiming the 21. So. Uh, we went to the green hour there also. Medium term, back above the 50-day on some of these, still below it on others, uh, yellow, but the green arrow and long term, we've been bullish going back all the way to July of 2020, with the exception of some uh, the laggard mid, uh, at times the mid, but mostly small cap indexes. We'll see how they rebounded when we check the charts here. So what just happened today? Uh, strong gap up overnight. Uh, and it faded immediately, made it think, uh, in fact, the um, NASDAQ 100 went from a 1% gap up to red within the first hour, uh, thinking everything was going to roll over. But then there was some news about uh, the Merck and Pfizer COVID pills going to be approved on a uh, emergency basis by the end of the week. And the market turned around, uh, reopened stocks, rallied strongly. And uh, at the open, value had been outperforming growth. Growth uh, kicked into gear and actually ended up outperforming value by the end of the day. You can see the numbers here. The G5, strongest, uh, up 3.1%. S&P 500 up 1.8. NASDAQ 100 up 2.2. Dow up 1.6. Mid-caps 2.6. Russell 2.95. Let's take a look at uh, the market facts. But first, let's take a look at... Team Run and Revere here, um, always putting our best foot forward, always uh, diving in, researching, trying to determine the best way to uh, have a smooth equity curve for our clients. We know there were some, uh, after some major outperformance in 2020, there's been some underperformance uh, very clearly as growth stocks have lagged at some significant uh, parts of 2020 contrary, uh, sorry, 2021 contrary to what the indexes are showing. Uh, but I did a webinar, my, or my most recent uh, video that I did last week, I talked about the process improvements and the stats, uh, limiting drawdowns and identifying when the market is turning uh, quicker and locked in uh, a bigger chunk of our uh, recent gains than we would have. And uh, let's see now if we can get back near uh, recent highs uh, off we we rallied 13 percent from the beginning of um, October through uh, the beginning of November before giving a chunk of that back now that we're into uh, December let's see if we can reclaim those uh, the highs of that rally uh, you have an interest in this approach we talk to any of us we're very friendly very open very um, committed to the markets and to our clients uh, just a phone call or an email away, email any of us, just our first name, and then at revereasset.com, that's Dan, Tim, Hunter, Mural, Alex, or Don, 
at revereasset.com or phone 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. So let's get to the uh, S&P 500 chart here. So here's uh, the inflection point last Wednesday uh, where the Fed announced, um, and it was accepted very strongly, very bullishly uh, into the close, put us near the top of this range at the 4,700 level. We continued very early Thursday and then a harsh reversal, three days down, bounced off the 100-day moving average, and now uh, one day to reclaim the 50, that's the red line, and the 21, that's the green line. We need to see more, quite obviously. Let's go to uh, a 15-minute chart here, and you can see here's the key area here, two, the 2 to 215 bar on 1215. You can see how strong we were into the close, then the gap up, then a fade, then another gap down, a rally, thinking that's it, we're done, we, sell, we held this 4,600 area, but a week close, and then Monday, a big gap down, uh, found the bottom at 45.30, that coincided just above the 100-day moving average, gap up today, but it can't be that easy, right, because we got to sell off and test, we did sell off for the first hour, and then a strong close, uh, getting us back into, right into some resistance, but um, We'll take a look at the at the market uh, facts here and um, discuss exactly where we are and where we want to be. So uh, what I was watching for was after the strength into the close yesterday, will the gap up hold? And initially we faded, and then uh, I just showed uh, very nice strength into the close. Uh, the news, as I mentioned, uh, COVID pills to be approved this week. Gap, fade, rally, G5 outperforming. Uh, we added Marvell and AMD to the portfolio today and um, added to our a position in ANET, sold Qualcomm uh, as we were uh, selling off as it was lagging and it broke to 21. But Marvell and AMD, there's so many semiconductors working fine. Um, good entry points had on uh, Marvell and AMD. AMD, we got in about 10 points lower than where we sold it last time, did some offensive selling when the market started to uh, turn a little bit. Uh, strength today, as I mentioned, in reopened plays, also in oils, banks, uh, base metals, tech, and retail, while the defensive sectors that had been leading, staples and utilities, uh, were red on the day. And uh, bonds, interest rates rose as bond prices were lower. So where are we on the S&P? 46.49, reclaim the 21 and the 50 today, as I mentioned, you can see uh, very clearly over there. So uh, two resistance areas, the prior all-time high area, that's the 4,700 to 4,715. This is this area that we keep failing at. Um, that's the, the second level we want to get to. The first level before that that we want to get to is this 4650 to 4670 level. That's where we stopped going up today. And uh, you can see the lows here a couple days here and back here uh, in mid-November. So that's the first uh, resistance area that we need to overcome if we want to take a shot at all-time highs. So as far as the moving averages go, 4638 on uh, the flat 21E. We reclaimed that today as well as the rising 50-day moving average. This prior all-time high area here, 4546. That's where we stopped going down late November when we were pulling back. That's where we stopped going down yesterday again. Also note this purple line, that's the 100-day moving average that's been providing support uh, to the indexes. Uh, and uh, we held that today. Undercutting and reclaiming this 45, 46 all-time high level, tested and holding the 100-day, and then down here the 200-day moving average, 6.5% lower, uh, but very glad to see that area higher than this pullback area from late September. So uh, should we get back to that area, that's two levels of support that the market uh, can provide. So those are the facts. That's those are the key levels that we're watching for now. Uh, into again the big the two big keys to watch now is this 4650 to 4670 uh, support level. It was November support now acting as resistance. Let's see if we can reclaim it. And then the 4700 to 4715 band 
that uh, has been resistant uh, from late October all through November, uh, late November and early December. Uh, failed breakouts constantly above that level. So that's the key area that we want to look at right around uh, 4,700 to 4,715. Let's go through the um, the rest of uh, the uh, five indexes, uh, starting with the NASDAQ 100. So bounced at the 100-day moving average also there, got above the 50-day, but uh, stopped at the declining 21 today. So that's a key area that we also want to keep an eye on. That's around the we want to get above 391 on the NASDAQ 100 to turn that uh, moving, to get above it and then turn that moving average back to where it's sloping up instead of sloping down. How about the Dow Jones Industrial Average? Lag today, but that's a good thing. You want to see growth outperforming. Another bounce off the 200-day moving average would have been a great entry point right here. Right now on the bounce, we've run into the 21 and the 50. Let's see if we can get back above that area. Uh, and finally, mid caps and small caps. First, we'll show the mid caps. Uh, reclaiming the 200-day moving average. Note the declining 21 is up next. And finally, small caps. Uh, still below all the key moving averages, but now let's break it down to a tighter time frame. So uh, let me go through this very quickly on all the moving averages and show one of the reasons why we maintained, uh, we weren't so overly concerned that we were going to go lower. The first look here is again, here's this 215 level. So remember this pattern, this is gonna be uh, the pattern that we're referencing for all the charts I'm gonna show right away. So we were at 46.30 at the Fed announcement uh, last Wednesday. NASDAQ 100 was at uh, 368, sorry, 386, right around here. Uh, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average was at 35,500 right around there, small caps, IWM, uh, right around the 213 area. So let's go to the big cap, uh, sorry, the uh, the growth portion of the Russell 2000. So that was around 281. Uh, we only undercut that for a brief period of time and then looking and comparing how far we were below it on the IWO, this is one of the G5 indexes, versus where we were on the S&P 500 as far as how far below uh, we got. And you can see that there was relative strength being exhibited there uh, on this first of the growth indexes. We reclaimed it and actually we never broke it today while we were still below it most of the day on the three big cap indexes. Let's take a look. Uh, at the S&P 500 here. Here's your 4630 area. We spent most of the time below it today, but when we did break above it, uh, it was like a little bit of um, the beach ball underwater as we uh, picked up steam into the close, a little bit of a pullback and then a strong close. So that 4630 area, uh, that uh, is something we want to watch also on a pullback. Uh, key area where we were right before the Fed. Same thing with the NASDAQ 100. It was at 386. Spent most of today below it. Then we finally got back above it midday during the rally. Dow Jones Industrial Average, 35,500, still below it. So did not get back above it on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but that just again reinforces that the beaten up uh, growth areas are showing relative strength. So IWO is the first one I want to show. The next one is FFTY. This is the IBD 50 index. This was trading around 43, uh, just a little bit below 43 today, but early in the day got back above it. QQQJ, another one. This was around 32.40 right before the Fed, uh, underneath it yesterday, but got back above it early today and then rallied strongly into the close. PDP, another one, uh, was r around 90.50, just barely below it a little bit today, got back above it quicker. And then um, ARC K, one that had been beaten down the most, but actually showed more strength versus the other ones. Now, ARK has been a whipping uh, boy ETF lately because uh, of how weak it has been and really Kathy Woods averaging down in some beaten down stocks. But note, this one during the entire process uh, held up better. And if things stop going down, if growth stops going down, uh, then the next 
logical conclusion is that uh, it, it's going to start going higher, and that was what we saw with some outperformance with ARK. Uh, then the other four joined in, and uh, finally the big cap indexes joined. So this is something that gives us uh, cause to be more optimistic uh, than we might be recently. Of course, uh, we always have a plan that covers both sides of the market, so if this starts uh, going lower, we'll react accordingly. But for now, uh, we consider this to be a good sign, the outperformance by the G5. Let's take a look at some individual stocks. And really the one that I want to focus on today is what could be every bull market needs leaders. And this may be uh, the canary in the coal mine for leadership, this big cup and handle on Micron after a great earnings report. Big gap up 216%, volume up 10.5% today. Your pivot is 89. So this is something I'm going to be watching very closely uh, over the next couple of days uh, if because we we're very well aware that any breakouts have been failing over the last couple of weeks. So if this one starts working, it's the first one out of the chute from a very nicely formed base. Let's look at it on a weekly chart. Uh, you can see the cup and handle there. Uh, again, 89.05, the pivot point. We got above it today. Let's look at an intraday chart. Not a lot of give back. A little little wiggle at the beginning, back below the pivot, but for the most part, trending higher uh, above the opening range, and that's a good sign. When when uh, volume came in and uh, supported the stock, it really never broke back below this pivot area of 89.05. Trust me, I was watching it closely considering whether or not to get in, but this strength did trickle over to the semiconductors today as they reclaimed their 21, bounced off the 50-day moving average, and I mentioned how we took positions in AMD and Marvel. I, there's like 15 uh, tickers that are either uh, fiber optics, uh, uh, networking, or semiconductors or semiconductor equipment company that all look pretty good. So. Uh, don't want to get too focused in that uh, in that particular area of tech, but that is what's acting well uh, at this point. And I think that's going to wrap it up today. So as always, I'd like to uh, hear from you. I'm on Twitter at dvanenboard. Email donerviraset.com or phone 855 Real Wealth. Wrapping up Tuesday, December 21st. Leading up into Christmas, we'll have videos Wednesday and Thursday. The markets are closed on Friday, and then Christmas is on Saturday. So um, anybody, if this is the last time you hear a video, have a very Merry Christmas. So wrapping up Tuesday, 1221, this is Don Vandenborg with Just the Facts. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.